Hello everyone, I'm Aku and I do watercolor paintings and today I'm going to be painting Forest Kitten. I already have Rainbow Kitten, Fire Kitten, and Ocean Kitten, so here's another one of their friends. I already have it nice and inked, so we don't need to do that today. First off, I'm going to start with the undertones. The overall, the finished cat is going to be kind of a brown and green, like a tree. But before we get there, I'm going to start with some undertones of purple and blue. And the reason for this is because watercolor is transparent. And if you have multiple colors layered on top of each other, it, gets an, it gives the color a very nice depth. A little more variety and depth to it than you would if you just used it straight out of the straight out, out of the out of the tube. You don't, we want to keep this very, very pale though, because you don't really want it to look purple. We just want to give the overlying brown color just a teensy little bit of a purplish tinge. And what I'm eventually going to be going for, uh, for the cat markings, is kind of a cross between a tabby cat stripes and, uh, and a wood grain kind of pattern. Since I'm improvising this, we'll see how close it actually gets. And give some blue undertones too, just for a little bit of variety. Fortunately, this ultramarine blue isn't a very strong pigment, so I don't have to dilute it quite as much as the purple. Now, we don't want to cover the whole cat. We do want to leave some parts of the paper white. Now let the let the regular brown show through just for a, for a little bit. We're going to let those dry, and while that happens, I'm going to mix what I need for the next step. What I want to do is kind of a fade effect from the, with the body of the cat as a light brown, like a wood color, and kind of green, like leaves, on the, with the paws and the edge of the tail. And since I'm going to do this fade effect is something that's on, that needs to be done pretty quickly, because it has to be done while the paint is still wet. So while those stripes are drying, I'm going to mix up the colors I need. Got a little bit of burnt sienna and some sap green for the leaves, leaf color. And something for an in-between shade, we'll use the, the emerald green. It's a nice light green. Just a little bit of that, don't need too much.
Oh, looks like I got a little brown mixed in with the with the ring, emerald green. Well, that's okay, I guess. Since I'm impatient, I'm just going to dry these off a little. There we go. And we're going to start with the with the paws, since they're at the edges. When you're filling a space with a solid color like this, you don't you want to start with the small edges. Because when you're doing this, you want to keep the edge of the color wet as long as possible. And that's a lot easier to do if you're just doing a small space. If you let it dry, then it gets a hard edge, and that's kind of hard to get rid of, if not impossible for some color pigments. So every once in a while, I'll just go back over this edge to keep it wet. And we don't want it to be too wet, though. See the way? When mixing, when mixing colors together like this, the wetter the paint is, the more they'll mix together. And if I get it too wet, then it will, they'll, the two colors, the brown and the green, will mix together completely, and we don't want that. We just want them to kind of blur at the edges. So we want it wet, but not too wet. Now let's do the middle green, see if how well I pulled that off. Not too bad. See, that was starting to dry a little bit there. Good thing we caught it. I'm going to make this a little bit yellow. I don't want it's a little too brown. It's a little too dark. We're gonna have to gonna have to lighten it up a bit. I notice that I don't lighten colors by adding white. I actually don't use white watercolor. And the reason for that is white watercolor is completely opaque. And I said before that watercolor is transparent. And that's actually, you know, its big selling point. So if you want if you want transparent and if you want something white in a transparent medium like this, you just leave, leave it blank so that you can see the white paper. Or in the case of what I just did, add more water so more of the paper shows through. And again, you'll notice how I'm I'm keeping the edges wet as I go so that we don't get any hard edges. If I did get a hard edge, I'd have to do something to disguise it. I probably wouldn't be able to, to paint over it. So maybe I'd have to make that the, the, where a stripe is or something. So it looks like that's a hard edge on purpose.
dark and just a little bit. And there. You can always make things darker with watercolors. That's another reason for keeping your colors light. You can always paint a darker or a brighter color over a pale one, but you can't always paint a lighter one over a dark one. And it looks like I forgot a foot. Uh-oh. Let's see if I can fix that without it looking terrible. Sorry, kitty, you almost came out of a tripod. There. That almost looks like I did it on purpose. I need a pale pink for the inside of the ears and the nose. So for that I'll use just a tiny little bit of alizarin crimson. It's a very strong pigment so I really don't want to use a whole lot. Yeah, you see I just have a teensy bit but that's that's all I'm gonna need. Or should forest kitty's eyes be? Probably green. That would be a good color. Yes, let's make them emerald green. And I'm going to mix it brand new since I got some brown in that in the previous pot. Actually, let's make this a little bit, uh, give it a little more variety. We'll make them kind of yellowy green. Or yellow with, with green speckles, maybe. I'll get some lemon yellow. Should have waited a little longer to do that. Sorry, kitty. Well, 
So anyway, while we're waiting for the eyes to dry, let's paint some leaves on the on the paws and the tail, and maybe the ears too. For that, I'll be just be using straight Viridian. It's a nice dark green, but I won't be needing too much. And we're just kind of dug on in some viridian, sort of like like leaves on the on the branches of a tree. Maybe I'll use a bigger brush for this. Fix that back leg. The eyes should be dry, so we'll finish up those. Or not. Well, I guess you're just going to have to have yellowy green eyes, kitty. Darken this up a little. That's all. Can't hardly see the color. And now I need the actual wood grain. So I'm going to need some nice dark brown for this. I'm going to use burnt sienna. I actually scratched that. Change my mind. I need a different kind of brown. I need some burnt umber instead.
like I said, I'm going for something kind of a cross between tabby stripes and wood grain, so we'll see how this works. If you're wondering why it seems to skip, it's because I'm recording this on my phone and it keeps maxing out on me. One of these days I'll get a real camera. Just let that dry a bit and then come do the shadows and we'll probably be done. And now it's time to do the shadows. I'm going to be using a combination of ultramarine and burnt sienna for this. You mix the two together in roughly equal portions, it makes a nice gray. But at least for the first uh, iteration, I'm going to be, I used a little more brown than, than blue. Mostly improvising where the shadows are. Truth is, I don't really think about it that much. That's probably not good advice, by the way.
darker shadows, like that back leg. Add a little more blue. And I'm going to call it done. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this. If it was helpful, maybe leave a comment. Go paint something. <laughs>